Today we're back out of the cemetery and we've got a stone we're gonna put back upright that's been on the ground for quite some time. This was the first minister to be buried at our cemetery. So we're gonna to try to get this thing back up how it's supposed to be. And the monument company's gonna come out and put a memorial stone out next week to go with it. So I'll show y'all what that's gonna look like when we're done. We found a foot stone right here. And you said it's got AW on it? Yeah, it sure does. The Reverend Archibald White Jr. was born in Argyle, New York on August the 3rd, 1800, and passed away in South Carolina on August the 8th, 1865. He spent four terms in the Associate Seminary in Philadelphia and received his license from Cambridge Presbytery in 1826. In November 1826, he preached in the Carolinas and spent most of 1827 there. Near the end of 1827, he received and accepted a call to preach in the infant congregation of the Associate Presbytery in Baltimore, Maryland. While in Baltimore, he married Miss Susan Greer, sister of the late Colonel William Greer, a prominent citizen and member of the Steel Creek Associate Presbyterian Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, whom he undoubtedly met during his previous tour in the Carolinas. In the summer of 1833, they left Baltimore and he accepted a call to the Steel Creek and Bethany churches in what is now the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Unfortunately, in 1834, his wife died, leaving him with a small daughter to raise on his own. In 1838, the Reverend White married a widow from the Nillis Creek area, Ms. Elizabeth Hart Campbell, with whom they had two sons. You might think we know what we're doing. It looks pretty good. I'm trying to kind of compare it to some of the others, like uh, the first, not the first one, but the first tall white one in that row. Yeah. It's about that high. About 18 inches, maybe a little, maybe 19. Uh, let's measure to the footstone and we'll go find another one and measure. About this time, the Reverend White removed himself from the Associate Presbytery and moved to the area near Nation Ford at Neely's Creek in York County, South Carolina, where he became a planner, a tavern owner, and a politician. The White family became members of the Neely's Creek Church, and he filled the pulpit often. He also served two terms in the South Carolina legislature. Unfortunately, Elizabeth Hart Campbell White departed this life in 1850 at the age of 44, leaving a husband, two small boys, and her mother to grieve. Dead center. Nice. And then we're going to look at the top of this stone, right? I mean, you can see what Close it's doing, right? Be, yeah. With that bow, there's only so much we can do. Aside from a mild bow, the Reverend White's marker is in remarkably good condition. At some point, possibly in the 1970s, there was some vandalism in the cemetery, and the decision was then made to lay down a bunch of the grave markers in this section of the cemetery. Unfortunately, time and the elements, as well as the lawnmowers, haven't been kind to these stones, and we've been working hard to get them back upright. With the formation of a historical committee and some help from local historians, in 2023, the congregation decided to add a memorial stone to the Reverend White's gravesite, noting that he is the earliest pastor to be buried in the cemetery, as well as some of his important contributions to the fledgling town of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Unlike a lot of individuals whose grave markers we've repaired, there's no lack of available information to pull from regarding the Reverend White. <laughs> Archibald White, and Paul Geddes has wrote an incredible history on Archibald White, so um, there's really no, no um, lack of things to talk about. I would definitely be remiss if I didn't include a couple of entertaining stories that have been passed down over a few generations. The first story is told that on a severely cold Sabbath morning, Mr. White was scheduled to deliver the sermon at Neely's Creek Church. Since he had to ride in an open buggy from his home on the Saluda Road all the way to the church, he fortified himself against the chill with the draft of what some of the local raconteers have declared was cherry brandy. After getting to the church, florid of complexion and aromatic of alcoholic spirits, he essayed to mount the steps of the pulpit. But on the way, he passed a wee bit too close to one of the dour straight-laced elders of the congregation, old Thomas Wiley 
who detecting Mr. White's condition, tugged at his coattail and sternly reproved him thusly, Come down, Mr. White, ye cannot preach thee this day. And that was that. Mr. White came down without a word uttered. An additional interesting note here is that the Reverend White would have been a first cousin-in-law to old Thomas Wiley, as the Reverend White's first wife was a first cousin to Wiley. Another interesting story that has been passed down over the years is that while White was serving in the South Carolina legislature, he addressed the speaker, and the speaker later asked, who was that gentleman that has just addressed me? On being told it was the Reverend White of the York District, he replied, in all my life, I've never been addressed with so much grace and dignity. The Reverend White was regarded as having the brightest mind in his day. He was a smooth, fine speaker, using the best language, never uttering an unchaste word, very attractive in person and demeanor, and was liked by all. Oh, look at that. That black comes off pretty good most of the time. It'll take a couple of treatments, but yeah, I mean, overall, a little bit more scrubbing. As the Civil War was closing, the struggle of his old self, his better nature, his godly training, drove away the clouds. He yearned to put on the harness to preach the gospel and was taking steps once again to become a minister in the First Presbytery when death claimed him on August 8, 1865. Archibald White Jr. was indeed a man of many talents and many inconsistencies, which is on par for all of us as imperfect human beings. If you liked what you saw here, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.